James W. Falcon, everyone, and a hearty hello to you. For me, it's just a few minutes to 10 p.m. East Coast time, but it could vary as to when you see this particular episode. So hello to you, regardless of the time zone that you're in. <clears throat> Most importantly, I wanted to deliver episode number five in my series, the public speaker's toolbox. So far, you've gotten a variety of information, a lot of good practical information I hope you found in the previous episode. So I really, if you're just joining me for this fifth episode, and you haven't seen the previous episodes, <clears throat> let me invite you to go back and take a look at episodes one, particularly so you get a good foundation of why this series was created and what we're hoping to accomplish, what we want to deliver. Take a look at episode two, which gives you your first of several practical exercises. And I'm going to start there and launch forward on this particular episode, um, connecting this episode five to two. Episode three, I shared some important information. Episode four, I gave you a very, very important tool and trick and remedy for you to use if you ever find that you put too much strain on your voice. Go back to episode number four and take a peek at that. That was one of those off, scripts, mo off script moments I was having that I just sat here at my desk in my office and thought, hey, let me just add that. Totally not a part of the original plan of action that I wanted to to deliver, but just as important. So I hope you find it useful, practical, and I hope you actually take me up on what I suggested and use it so you can benefit from the remedy that I provide for episode number four, episode five. So let's, in this episode, go back to two. In episode two, I invited you to do an exercise, which was to come up with your own 10 minute speech practice it in front of a mirror and pay attention to what your face is doing and pay attention to your body language. Those are important cues and they are important elements and aspects of the message that you want to deliver. So I'm going to invite you to do that again. Come up with a separate 10 minute speech. You don't have to write it down, just something that you want to talk about for 10 minutes and I want you to practice, you know, orating that in the mirror, practice speaking that in the mirror, in the mirror, pay attention to your body language. What are your shoulders doing? Are you even, um, oftentimes I find myself leaning to one side or the other, depending upon my mood. Sometimes when it's late at night, like it tends to be when I'm doing a lot of things, I may lean sometimes more to my, I guess this would be my left side. And other times when I'm super excited, I may be reared back. So pay attention to your body language. Pay attention to your posture. Pay attention to your, your head. Sometimes I tend to lean this way. Sometimes I tend to lean the other way. Sometimes I'm leaning back too far. Sometimes I'm way too close up front. So just pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to the tone that you're using. Um, specifically, add some more layers to the exercise this second time around when you develop the speech and you present the speech before yourself in front of yourself in the mirror pay attention to your tone what message is the tone of your voice communicating is your voice cracking is it incredibly mellow is it dry are you talking too slow so think about the pace of what it is you want to communicate because those things are as important as all of the other aspects. So you've got paying attention to your voice tone, um, the depth, the pace, pay attention to your posture, pay attention to your which way you're leaning, pay attention to what your face does. I would tell you a secret from having been in the customer service world as long as I have. One of the things and you probably heard this and people, I know they hate this exercise, but in customer service, we always tell representatives to keep a mirror in front of you so that you're constantly smiling and you see yourself smiling. 
the idea behind that is, is that the science behind it is when you smile, you release a happiness endorphin in your body and your brain and your whole body begins to respond to that happiness. Kim, that's true. That's an actual scientific fact, actually, actually a biological fact. And so for customer service folks and for people who are typically public facing to get that enzyme working um, and you kind of trick your brain into releasing it. And as a result of that, your entire being begins to be happier. You, you tend to have a more jovial delivery. So keep that in mind. Smile. You know, even if you have to force it, we used to tell people in customer service, fake it until you make it. So just put a nice, pleasant smile on your face. Okay? Don't force it. Don't look weird or crazy looking. But just put a smile on your face. Think of something pleasant. Think of the end of your speech and how joyful you're going to be when you're done. Okay? That's going to be super, super important. And I'm going to make myself a note to tell you about a very good secret. I may tell you this time around. Yeah, matter of fact, I will. I'll tell you about a very important secret that my father, a master speaker and orator, shared with me years ago that you will find incredibly important. But the meat and the potatoes of this episode are as follows. So with everything that I've told you, go back and review this information. I'm going to add another couple of layers on top of it. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of movement, okay? Actually moving when you are giving a speech. For example, when you initially stand up to greet your audience and you present yourself, think about how you want to do that. I like to lean in oftentimes. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning, whatever. My name is James W. I like to lean in and I like to make a hand gesture so that it, it, it looks more inviting, looks more, uh, it looks much more um, like an attempt for me to physically connect. And you can actually step down from the platform or the podium from which you're speaking and come as close to the crowd in the audience as you can. And I know for some of you, that may seem like, oh my God, James, I'm already nervous enough, but just consider these things. These are things I want you to consider putting in your toolbox that you can use when you feel the time is right. So think about the movement of particularly in the beginning of a speech, a few times during when you want to make a good PowerPoint and at the end, come down from the platform, walk the aisle, come at least to the folks in the first row and reach out to them. Maybe even shake a hand or two. Okay, that's very, very powerful because you're wanting to present yourself as being approachable and practical and your information will be received in that spirit. So think about that. It's very important. You also want to consider several times throughout your speaking. And this is super important because you want to have a message that is engaging and interesting, but you yourself. Your being needs to also tell that story as well. You want to do that. And one of the ways you can do that is just by simply repositioning yourself. Watch. So if I'm talking to you and all of a sudden I turn and I start talking to the folks over here, and then a couple of minutes later, I turn and talk this way. And then I may talk to the people in the middle here. And then I kind of rotate. I mean, it, it may look a little weird. You may feel like a rotisserie chicken but it'll be super, super important to make those adjustments so that everybody is watching you wanting to see what it is you do next or anticipating what they believe you'll do next. And when you get that anticipation building, then you do something different. So when you've turned a few times to each of the three directions, if you happen to have anybody behind you, you can turn and talk to them. And then what you do is you totally step out from where, from the rhythm that you've been making and creating, and you do something different. So at all times, it is exciting to watch James Falcon speak and move while he talks. 
And you want to do that because moving like that will give you an extraordinary sense of control and you'll be comfortable repositioning yourself to a new place, right? So, and that's really super important. Or you can make certain gestures at different points in time. You may have your hand on your chin for a few minutes, then you may put them in, put your hands together in your lap or on the counter. You may clasp your hands or whatever the case may be. You may talk and kind of have your hand on your tie or just your tie or whatever the case may may be. Or you may be watching your watch. You may have, I like to have a pen in my hand. And at different points in time, I may put the pen down or put it away. Or I may go into my pocket and pull out a handkerchief or something and uh, just wipe my nose or something. Do something that is indicative of movement. And that way you keep your crowd and your audience's eyes moving. Because what creates boredom is when somebody is stoic, their voice is monotone, and they're not moving. They've been, they've been, they've been in one position for most of the speech. And after a while, that kind of plays out and translates into the mind of listeners as this guy is incredibly good. Boring for this woman. So you want to make movement a real integral part of the delivery of the information that you're giving, which reminds me, I better start doing that more when I'm doing these YouTube videos. So, so think about the power of leaning in, leaning back, you know, having your hand on your chin. Um, you know, even I like to do this every now and again when I am talking, speaking, training, whatever. Take your glasses off and lean in. Or take your glasses off and wipe the lenses. See, these are things that are attractive. They're interesting to the people watching you, but they also serve as good releasers of stress for yourself to do things, do practical things. Sometimes I may periodically look down at my phone and turn the volume down and turn it over. So you're sending a signal subliminally that what you're doing is most important. So you want to say, you know what, let me make sure I turn my phone off. And you tell me, you put that down. So you just created an opportunity for you to explain to them that your what you're doing is of the utmost importance and your crowd are more important than whatever could happen on your phone. You may even get up and put your phone across the room near your bag or whatever the case may be, or put it behind you or something. So these are the things you can do to keep the audience and the crowd engaged. So we're talking about the importance of making sure movement is a part of the delivery. Your posture, your making sure you're aware of what your face is saying, what your body language is like. When you're moving, you know, you're presenting, you're leaning in and you're engaging the audience. Sometimes it's really important where you might take a seat, like on a, on a high stool if you have one, or sit on the edge of something and then stand up take a step forward when you want to make a PowerPoint, when you want to emphasize something. You know, when you're typing and you want to put something in bold or underline or italicize it, in speaking, you do that by a lean in. You might dip a shoulder in or two, right? Or a lean back. Well, don't be afraid to be animated. Use your hands. I like to use my hands quite a bit so that people are always wondering what are you going to do next and how are you going to do? So use your hands, point, you know, illustrate with your hands, right? Emphasize with your hands. Don't be afraid to do that. These are just a few things I want you to put as tools in your public speaker's toolbox. So pay attention to, so when you do, now do two 10-minute speeches this time. The first one, you're going to do what I shared with you in the beginning of this video. The second one, I want you to incorporate the movement element in aspect. Your hand and your physical location, just literally get up, take a step or two one way or the next, or maybe a step over and turn. Talk this way, turn this way, talk this way, right? And turn back. Do that a few times while you're talking and get used to the feeling of being mobile, of turning, of adjusting, okay? Get used to reaching out and shaking a hand or two away. Hey, can you guys hear me in the back? Can you hear me? What about you guys over here? You guys okay? Over here, everybody can hear me? Everybody can hear me? Can you see me fine? Okay, let me know if anything changes 
if my voice tone, or if you need me to repeat something, feel free to say that. Is that okay for the folks in the back? You want to say things like that to make sure that your audience is engaged and that they stay engaged, okay? Fair enough? So I'm going to give you as much as I can on these episodes as it relates to public speaking, because these things are super, super important, and they can be tools that you pull at any point in time and use them so you can deliver the best, most powerful, impactful, memorable um, speech or whatever it is you're doing. And you can do any of these things. You can do what I just shared in this uh, this episode. You can do these things in an interview. You can do them in a training session, whether it's a small group or a large. You can do them in front of a class of students or in front of an auditorium for those. It doesn't matter. You can translate each of these things in either setting because the bottom line is we all want to be engaged, if not entertained. So it's good when we see a presenter that knows how to use their voice inflection to go up and down, in and out, you know, highs and lows, you know, incorporate some humor so you break up the monotony of the delivery. Don't lecture, communicate, talk, engage, tell a story. That's really, really important. Wrap the theme of what you're trying to communicate and deliver, wrap a story around that. Think of an interesting way to include as many story bits and pieces, get people thinking, right? And when you want them to think, then you put your hand on the side of your your, your face and, and you kind of give the understanding that, you know, have them to think, say, hmm, hey, everybody, just take them on, hmm, right? Whatever you just make sure you can deliver that in a way that is comfortable. These are the elements that public speakers typically use. And by the way, Continue to go here to YouTube and look and pay attention. Become a student of speeches. Now, of course, we don't have the video of the of the great public speakers like Winston Churchill and others. But there are some wonderful modern day, really professional, profoundly talented people in, in this modern era that have delivered speeches that are videoed and out on YouTube become a student of those speakers. Look at how they do things. Look at what they do, how they move, how they engage the crowd. One last thing I will share on this episode is something my father told me, and I made myself a note to make sure that I tell you this. For those of you that are still like, hey, James, I hear you, but I get really, really nervous to a point where I clench up and I'm scared to death. I want to share this with you. My father told me this when I was back before my teens. Find one person in your crowd that has a pleasant demeanor and look on their face and talk to that one person. Every once in a while, move your eyes around, but come back to that one person and pretend it's just that one person in the room. Make your speech count for that one person. Engage that one person. Now, don't do it to the expense of everybody else, but do it to the degree that that one person, that the entire group becomes just a single person so that you need to communicate with. So when you look at that one person, just spread your eyes out a little bit from the right to the left, from the beginning, the front of that person, a few people to the few people behind that person. So focus on that one person as your base keep coming back to that one person and then fan your eyes out so that it looks very smooth and very, very openly engaging for everyone. But find that one person in the beginning. You know, as you're getting ready to deliver, just look out in advance and decide on that one person that you want to talk to and make that one person your home base. Keep coming back to that one person until you feel comfortable enough to find several other people and then make the entire crowd your mission to connect with everybody corporately. That's a good, I do that even to this day, find that one person. And if you've come there with a partner, your wife, your husband, or someone in your office pool or somebody that you know, then, you know, engage one of those people until you feel comfortable enough to want to pan your eyes out 
to the entire group, but use a single person as your base and continue to go back to him and her and begin to build from there. And you will have an amazingly easy time and to deliver your, your speech or whatever it is you're delivering. And it'll be fun and you'll know what you can do and you'll have an idea of a blueprint for you to take to continue moving forward. And that's all these videos are, is providing you a methodology, a roadmap, a blueprint as to what to do and how to do next. So you become completely comfortable the next time you speak, train, or deliver any information in front of a group of people, you'll feel better because you'll know what to do. You'll know how to do. And then you'll have a number of things in your toolbox from which you can draw to put into place to do the things you need to do on a level that's going to work for you and a level that will make your oration incredibly impactful. This has been episode number five already. We're five episodes in to the uh, Public Speakers Toolbox. I'm so excited. There's plenty more information to come. Remember, you have two exercises to do between now and the next time we air, between now and the next time you watch. The next episode will be episode six. You got two, two exercises to do. Make sure you make them count. Develop two 10-minute speeches and then go back and review this to know what you want to focus on on each of those 10-minute speech deliveries. Remember, deliver them to yourself in front of a mirror. Pay attention to all the things that the people in your audience might pay attention to. What's your face doing? What are your, what are your gestures? Are you moving? Are you move, or do you appear to be interesting? Do you appear to be someone or something that people want to watch your movements? Become that person. Don't be afraid, as I said, to be animated. Use your hands to emphasize. And at different points in time, you might make a really good point. You might just don't bang so you scare people, but just make a point where you may tap something in front of you. You may hit the microphone a few times. Hello, anybody there? talk to the, you know, split your audience up into three directions. You have a center, a right, and a left, and adjust yourself to talk to each of the people groups in those three areas, and adjust every now and again. So you're turning and you talk, and then actively engage them, saying, can you guys still hear me in the back? Can you hear me okay? What about you guys up here? Can everybody see me okay? I know you probably don't want to, but can everybody see me good and clearly? And if anything changes where anything is different with regard to how you hear my voice or your view of me, please feel free to let me know and I will be happy to do whatever I can to accommodate. So be comfortable in your communication and in presenting yourself as an accessible resource the entire time that you are engaging your, your, your audience. Be, be sure to incorporate very practical things Preferably in the beginning, like I shared with you the thing about my cell phone. Ask other people, hey, folks, if you don't mind, while we're while I'm talking, would you mind just checking your cell phones for me and making sure that they're silent or off or on vibrate or or down really, really low, please, if you wouldn't mind, because it really disrupts my train of thought when cell phones are going off. So if you wouldn't mind, help me to help you. I greatly appreciate it. You want to take some time to do that? Just dig into your pocket, your wallet, your coat pocket, wherever your cell phone is, and check the status of it for me. And while everybody's doing that, just say, okay, great. Are we all good and we're ready now? Okay, great. Thank you for doing that. Let me tell you who I am and why I'm here. And then start your space. So you want to do things that really break up the monotony of delivering a speech or a lecture. Be as engaging and don't forget, don't, don't forget to make sure you add something humorous, many humorous things into the um, delivery of what you're communicating. Do these things, my listening and viewing friend, and I guarantee you will go over extraordinarily well. And you just might have some fun in the whole process, which is also a great byproduct and benefit of public speaking. Don't forget to have some fun. Until the next time I'm in front of you, whatever you do, however you do it, get B and stay encouraged. And from my heart and home to your heart and home, peace and power. Take care.